Good morning. Good morning. And happy Easter. Please be with me in call and response in our welcome and greeting. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We do welcome all of you on this Easter Sunday, 2024, this last Sunday in March. We welcome those who are worshiping with us, not only in person on this special day, but those who are live streaming with us or may watch the service later in a recorded way. Welcome all on this glorious Resurrection Day. I do want to bring to your attention a few announcements. By example, with the insert in your bulletin, want to remind those with families, with children, with young ones, that our nursery is open this morning, but will not be staffed so that all of us can celebrate our risen Lord. There are a variety of activities available to keep your child busy if you choose to stay in the sanctuary. We do also have worship binders to help your child follow along in the service and worship bags filled with fun things to do as well as a basket filled with Easter-focused coloring activity and sticker books and crayons. What a wonderful way in which we embrace our children and families and welcome on this Easter Sunday. Our nursery is located right around the corner to my right, and there are activities, as I mentioned, and with the baskets available, located on the sign-in table in Fellowship Hall. If parents do need or want to take their children to the nursery, we do ask that you attend with them. We want to recognize the beautiful display of Easter flowers and memory and loved ones of those who are with us and those that have gone on to Church Triumphant. Thank you all for providing the beautiful display of flowers. Thank you also to our altar and arts ministry team for creating a beautiful display. Alleluia Easter, Christ is risen, appropriate for this Easter Sunday. Thank you very much for their ministry. Also want to remind you that our plant sale offered by the United Women of Faith is coming up soon. There is sign-up forms and available in the Fellowship Hall along with some color brochures so you have a sense of what you might want to order. Orders are due April 14th and pickup is Saturday, May 11th, 12 to 2 p.m. Other details as you see that. Also important as North Olmsted United Methodist Church continues to take a lead in developing partnerships and mission ministry with UMC area churches. We will be hosting a fundraiser for the Nehemiah Mission and helping them particularly with some renovations, repairs that are necessary for their kitchen. That event is on Sunday, April 21st, and we are going to be rolling out the hospitality for all those that are attendants with appetizers, desserts, and beverages, and our own Javier Gonzalez will be providing special music that day. The director of Nehemiah will be with us, Reverend Mike Parisher, who will offer some encouraging words about the mission. So details there about how you can support this important partnership effort. Finally, I do want to mention that there are two ways that you can offer your offering. Some of you did that as you came into worship today. The pink envelopes for the general operating ministries of the church also supporting capital needs of the church, as well as, which went out in communication this week via email, our special Easter offering envelopes. If you're not already given, I ask you prayerfully discern to do so. We will be blessing the offering, but as we do so, and you'd like to give as you leave the service, the offering plates are offered in the aisle there. Please make designations of your choice in the support of our ministries and missions. Now, as we do come to this time of worship, I do encourage you to center your hearts, your minds, and your spirits as we listen to the prelude, Glory Be to Jesus, in our introit, The Lord is Risen.
I invite you to stand as you are able for our call to worship. The tomb is dark, but empty. The stone has been rolled away. The burial clothes are put aside. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us worship our risen Savior. Let us join together in our unison prayer. We repeat our Easter shouts of surprise and joy again and again for news of your victory over powers of death and evil is news so startling, so amazing, so different from the news that bombards us day by day. Beyond our comprehension, you startle us again and again with resurrection life, bringing grace and hope and joy. You, in your risen power, are shaping all our days, and so we praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Hear these words from our New Testament reading, Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak to them, I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to join in our hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, verses 1 through 4.
as we come to this time of prayer, this priceless gift of prayer, not only in this time of worship, but throughout all our days as a faithful community here at North Olmsted United Methodist and beyond. One example of that, again, is our prayer list in the bulletin. I encourage you to keep these individuals, these families, these loved ones here and abroad in your prayers, not only on the Sunday morning, but throughout the week. Reach out to them in love and support. Do also want to offer these additional prayer requests that have been received with our blue cards. Prayers for Dorothy. Dave Russell's mother is in the hospital with pneumonia, and the family requests your prayers. So prayers for Dave Russell's mother, Dorothy. Mike Burns reports that Dave Dixon, and, and what a horrible thing, I hope that he's getting the help that he needs, was found on a sidewalk after a fall, is in ICU. He laid on the ground for 11 hours before Mike found him. Mike, where are you? Yep. Thank you for your ministry, your love and care, and being there. And we pray for all medical staff that are attending to him. We pray for Dave that he would regain health. Andy Walsh asks that we pray for the family of Keith Hilgman. My cousin Keith passed away in Texas yesterday. Appreciate the thanks to the church for your prayers that his final days were comfortable. Andy, we pray for family, loved ones of Keith, especially you and others that we know with Keith. Please let us know how we can walk with you and support you uh, during this time. Have I received all the cards this morning? Any others that may have not been received? Let us now come to God in a time of silence, centering with God in prayer, and then we will move into which I will prompt with you, standing and reciting the Apostles' Creed and the Lord's Prayer. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Heavenly, infinite, ever-loving and all-present God, we thank you. We are in glory and praise with you through the hope and promise come true of the risen Christ, the risen Christ who has come before us in these very moments in this time of worship to provide what we need. We offer our needs, sometimes spoken, sometimes sung, sometimes simply in our silence as you search our hearts and minds and spirits, that we might receive the glory, the power, the love, the strength, the comfort, the guidance of the risen Christ in our lives. Lord God, each of us come with different joys and different burdens this morning in the fullness of life and faith. And so as we come, we ask that you enter in and again, that we would have a keen awareness of not only you, but the risen Christ within us. That all around us, we may find support, love, and care in the glory of the resurrection. Lord God, as we do bring things to you, we are mindful of the needs not only of ourselves, but our families, our neighborhoods, our country, and our world. For the things that we are in joy with, again, we give you praise and honor and glory. For the things that we are concerned about, give us hope through one person at a time, through the glory and sharing of resurrection life, that we might give people hope, tangible hope, reaching out by example to provide through individuals, through groups and countries, people who are starving, may we give them food, people that need shelter, that we would give them housing, people that need peace in war-torn places, that they may find peace. Lord God, help us to endure in these monumental challenges and that you let us know that nothing is impossible through you and through our risen Christ. 
Give us stamina, give us strength for the journey. Lord God, we know that there are times in our life in which we sin, in which we feel distant, and we feel disconnected, but you never let us go. You are merciful and you forgive us. And we know this by example through the confession of our faith. Let us now stand and join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us pray as Jesus taught his disciples and teaches us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now let us enjoy our choir anthem, Joy in the Morning. Thank you. 
Thank you, choir, for the joy of your anthem and the joy to be able to sing with you this morning. Please come now with me in a time of prayer as we bring to God our offering and blessing. Lord God, for your infinite blessing, the abundance of blessings that you offer overflowing in and with our lives, in body, mind, and spirit, with all that we are, we give you thanks. As a sign of our thankfulness to you, we give back these gifts, that you would bless them for all kinds of wonderful ministries of love, compassion, mercy, hope, and light. We pray your blessing upon these gifts in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Let us now enjoy our special music, Come Ye Faithful, Raise the Strain. Thank you, Bell Choir, for your beautiful music with us this morning. What a blessing, what a joy it is for me to be with all of you, children of God, people of all ages, especially our little ones. So wonderful to have you with us this morning. Blessings to all of you as children of God. I want to offer this appropriate message from the Gospel of Mark for Resurrection Day from Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. Hear the words in familiar but also new ways as you experience risen life. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb, 
that had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid." And all that had been commanded them, they told briefly to those around Peter. And afterward, Jesus himself sent out through them from east to west the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us join together in our next hymn, Easter People, Raise Your Voices. John, Phil, everything's okay? Okay, well then, repeat after me. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Sometimes it is a challenge for everyone to hear and respond to the same message. Do you remember as a child the telephone game with cups and strings? Do you remember that, some of you? When you tried to hear exactly what the person was saying. I remember playing the game as a youth in my church as we were instructed to repeat back accurately and truthfully what was being said to the larger group. And then our youth leader made it a bit more challenging. You know, sometimes you could hear through that taut string 
a little muffling sound, but if you listen carefully and the person punctuated, you listen carefully, you could share with the other group accurately and truthfully what was said. But the bit of the challenge was that as we sat in a circle, one person would whisper in the ear of the person next to them a one-line phrase of their choice. Just a simple, brief sentence not too long, just a few words. The message was whispered as it was heard from one person to the next, with the last person then being asked to share with everyone what was originally said, exactly, word by word. Well, you can understand if you played that game or you recall, oftentimes it was not exactly the same message that was communicated from the first person to the person sitting beside them. And so lessons were learned. Lessons were learned in listening carefully and reporting the actual truth of what was said and in valuing the integrity and honesty of the person communicating the message. So I wonder more seriously about today's telephone game with people of all ages, but especially with adults and the potential I hope to model well for them. For one would think that people would ideally, and I know I have some utopian thoughts about that, or some might say I'm unrealistic, but one would think that people would ideally work to listen more carefully, and do your homework. And then that homework of listening carefully and an experience of life and faith and all the things that come to us to report accurately what is being reported as facts and not conspiracies and suspicions and to do so accurately in truth-telling from one group, one person, to another. But it's not easy, is it? It's complicated. Today's telephone game involves many ways of communicating. Cell phones and TV news, our favorite brands, our favorite flavors, our radio stations, the internet, and all kinds of social media platforms, which in the best case scenario report truths that people could, yes, benefit in knowing, but in the worst case scenarios, we know this, do we not? Are very misunderstood and spread, yes, misinformation, mistruths, falsehoods, and yes, lies. One needs to be so careful with what they say and what they hear, and how they sort out and process what is being shared as truth or not. So what is the truth? Where can we find it and what can we rely on? Well, I have many suggestions, and that's for another day of discussion from a secular perspective, but for today, I want to zero in to focus on the best and most important resource we have to communicate in truth with one another. The Holy Bible. The Word. Capital W. Inspired by God and providing the ultimate truth. Capital T. For living as Christians, as people of faith. My friends, the Holy Bible, not shrouded or wrapped in one's own worldly priorities, ego-driven and self-serving interests, or in the worst case scenario, marketed to profit with money at the expense of God's children, God's people. 
My friends, that is not, that is not what God has communicated to any of us to do in response to hearing and sharing God's word with others. In the best case scenario, we are called as Easter people to rise above it assertively, boldly, and to not shy away and cower or put our tail between our legs. We are to rise above the atrocities of egotism and narcissism and to present the Bible with unselfishness and prayerful discernment and doing so in a way that honors and respects the eternal loving God, the risen Christ and the Holy Spirit as God directs us with precious lifelong learning and sharing with others. We are called to do so boldly with integrity and honesty, witnessing with love and grace that stems not from our own power and design, but from God. So with the powerful, life-giving message of the resurrection of Christ, where can we in all of this? Sometimes it gets messy and it's hard to sort out. Where can we find the truth, capital T, that is so central to our lives? Foundationally, my friends, it exists with the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There are some fine differences and what the first witnesses discovered and shared, but this is what the four accounts have in common when we sort out the enduring eternal truth, capital T. At least one or two women, women, and this is wonderful about the four Gospels, at least one or two women, and in some cases joined by disciples and others very soon after their arrival at the tomb, were the first on the scene where Jesus had been buried. The stone was found to be rolled away. That's the truth in all four Gospels. A very large, huge stone. And importantly, the tomb was found to be empty. And we hear the emotions in all four Gospels, not the least of which is the Gospel of Mark today, the women responding in fear and alarm and surprise. And in all four Gospels, at least one or two messengers or angels were present to give words so important of assurance. Can you imagine how startling it was? Assurance and encouragement and very specific instructions to the women. The messengers or angels reported that Jesus had risen in all four Gospels and that he was making his way to Galilee to appear to the disciples. The women were further instructed and empowered to report all this good news, specifically of, yes, Jesus' resurrection, and that he had been, in fact, raised. He was risen, the accurate truth. And say that they reported as the first witnesses the accurate truth of the good news, sharing a life-giving message of truth that was passed on, yes, to the disciples, They saw him, eyewitnesses, not one, but all of them. To those then who would create, they would go on through this resurrection faith, through these appearances. The first house churches made known in the book of Acts, if you read on, after Jesus' ascension to heaven. And then through the power of the living and risen Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, faithful people would continue to offer and grow in great numbers through the centuries of lives committed to living and sharing the love of God and Jesus to all, to all generations, from one to the next, eventually to us right here and now. A life-giving message that we and others are yearning to hear again and again or maybe for the first time, or maybe feels like for the first time. 
My friends, millions of people are looking for Jesus. Just as the first women at the tomb were, as the disciples were, as many of us are still today. As many people known or unknown to us, they are looking for signs. We are looking for signs of God and Jesus' eternal love, grace, and forgiveness. People are looking for someone to remove very large stones in their lives that make them feel like they are stuck inside a tomb. Tombs of darkness and despair. Maybe you know that quietly or you share it with someone you can trust. Tombs of darkness and despair, but yes, a desire, a human desire, a faith desire to be released and freed. Freed from all kinds of pressing matters. You can name them, each of you, of deep concern for yourselves, your families, your friends, your neighbors. Yes, our country and our world. And so through these long lists that sometimes people feel overwhelmed with in the darkness and feeling that they're entombed with them, people are searching for, are they not, looking for light and hope and to not be caught forever in that feeling and experience. Perhaps that is the case for you. If so, know these truths from the resurrection account in the Gospel of Mark as it echoes through the centuries in context for us during these very moments. On this first day of the week, the sun has risen. Yes, it's not very bright right now, but it is there. It is always there, even on the most cloudy, dark days. And you know this from those of you that have flown. As you go above the clouds, the the sun is shining. It is always shining. The sun has risen upon us, as Mark reassures us. And then in answer to who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb, our tombs, not either one of us, not any of us, not alone, but maybe through God, but it, it is God through Jesus Christ that rolls away these massive stones in our life and frees us from the tomb. For Jesus has been raised, the gospel tells us, and also says that you will will see him, your eternal salvation. Now, some of you may be begging the question, well, how will I see him? How will we see him? How will I, how will we see what we are looking for? What we or anyone else are hoping for? You will. We will experience release and freedom from the darkness and feelings of being bound in a tomb through the light and hope of each person around you. To your left, to your right, behind you, and in front of you. And with people you know beyond this holy sanctuary who are yet to be known, who understand, and don't we seek that, someone who will understand our stories, the realities of both light and darkness. And to not judge us in that experience, but to listen and to receive us in grace and hope. And to understand that ultimately, that's our hope, that light wins the day. Light wins the day through the love of God and the risen Christ. For we are Easter people in our presence and our singing and the experiences of what we see, of what we hear, and all that we are today. That is our hope and that is our light. On Monday, April 8th, millions of people in our part of the world will be looking to the skies with great anticipation and excitement and experiencing a total solar eclipse. For many, it will be a -a once-in-a-lifetime experience, as the next one is projected to be seen in parts of the United States 
on August 23, 2044. April 8th will be an experience in which the moon passes between the sun and earth, completely blocking the face of the sun for a brief time, preventing any sunlight, preventing any sunlight from reaching us. The sky will darken as if it were dawn or dusk, Weather permitting, people in the path of the total solar eclipse will be able to see, interestingly, the sun's corona, the outer atmosphere, which is otherwise usually obscured by the bright face of the sun. A hint, if you will, that the light never goes out. Some of my family members will be joining Terry and me at our home on the lake to experience this time of light and then darkness and then light again. I will also be mindful that day of the timing of the eclipse as it will be, not by my planning and design, be the day of the eight-year anniversary of my father's death. And so as I look to the skies, I will also be thinking about my father's own passing from light to darkness and then to light again. And I will be giving thanks for his life and his conviction that the light, while it can be totally overcome by darkness for a while, does not in the end win the day. My father knew that the light and love of God and Jesus are what is eternal now and forever for him, for all of us. That message is true, my friends. Yes, true, yes, for all of us. In the darkness of Jesus' death, he rose from the dead on the third day and the hope and promise of God's light, my friends, remember, one the day. The message is true for all of us in every matter of life and death, for he lives so that we might know the fullness of life and love in every color imaginable, now and forever. Are you looking for Jesus. He is here. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Let us join together in that wonderful closing hymn. He lives, United Methodist Hymnal 310, and the words before us. Let us sing together.
Friends, please respond with me responsibly in our benediction. Because the tomb is empty, your life can be full. So go into every place and every day as people brimming with the love of God. Be graceful in spirit, hopeful in word, faithful in deed. Live for the risen Christ as Christ lives in you. Alleluia and amen. Happy Easter. Please be seated as we enjoy our postlude. Thank <laughs> you.